Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video. So one of the biggest questions I get asked a lot on my channel is, how do I connect my Amiga computers to modern LCD displays? And the short answer is I use what's called an upscaler. Now I have three different upscalers in my possession and I'm gonna show you each of the three that I have talk about the advantages and disadvantages, how they work and how to hook them up and talk about the price and send you some links to purchase them if you're interested in doing this yourself, as well as give my take on each of the three and give my recommendations for what I think is the best upscaler that you can get for Amiga computers. Okay, so we're going to take a look at three upscalers that work with the Amiga, starting with the XRGB Frame Meister by Mycomsoft, the OSSC or Open Source Scan Converter, and finally a cheap generic SCART to HDMI Converter. So before we continue, it's important to understand what an upscaler actually is. Now, there's two parts to this. If you think about the Amiga's native resolution, if we think about a workbench resolution, for example, it's typically a 640 by 400 if we're doing a just a high-res you know, workbench screen. Now, modern televisions these days are capable of displaying a 1080p and even up to a 4k display especially with the advent of 4k televisions really taking off in the marketplace over the last 18 months or so so in order to fill an entire tv display in this day and age you have to multiply that 640 by 400 resolution by a factor of you know two three four times to basically get the pixel count high enough in order to fill a modern display so essentially an upscale is doing exactly that without taking any processing power away from the computer now there's also a second part of that and that's also to manage the rgb frequency now if you think about the amiga's native rgb frequency it's at 15 kilohertz and unfortunately most modern lcds and monitors can't display a 15 kilohertz signal they usually start at around 31 kilohertz so the upscaler will also manage the increase of the frequency from 15 kilohertz up to a 31 kilohertz frequency in order for the RGB sync to kick in and be able to be displayed. So assuming you have an Amiga computer, in order to do this you need to connect an RGB SCART cable to it. All Amigas have the same 23 pin RGB connector. You can pick up an RGB SCART cable from resellers like Amiga Kit. It's going to give you the best possible display. And honestly, even if you just wanted to connect your Amiga to a standard CRT monitor, I wouldn't consider anything less than this. So this cheap upscaler costs around $40 from Amazon. It's a quite popular one. Amiga Bill from the Guru Meditation uses one for his live streams, and Miss Mad Lemon uses one for her Nostalgia Time videos. It has the option to upscale to 1080p and for $40 it does a pretty decent job. However, there is some noticeable lag and artifacting that you can see clearly, especially with faster scrolling titles. But for the price, it's hard to fault this. Next up is the Open Source Scan Converter or OSSC. This is an FPGA based scan converter that was built by Marcus Hayakari. This one is priced at around 175 US dollars. It has a SCART input and additional inputs for VGA and component signals. Now we won't be using them on the Amiga, but it's a nice touch. 
This is the newer 1.6 version that has an HDMI output and it takes 5 volts of power just like the cheaper scan doubler we tested. If you want an OSSC, unfortunately you'll need to get on a waiting list for one since they need to be built by hand. If you are wondering, I ordered mine on June 25th and received mine at the end of September. The OSSC works with scan lines individually rather than frames and it doesn't store a frame buffer in its memory anywhere. Therefore, there is little to no lag at all. Let's take a look at the image quality. And finally, the big boss of upscalers, the Micomsoft XRGB FrameMeister. Priced at around 400 US dollars, it's a very expensive unit. It has different inputs for RGB SCART, S-Video, two HDMI inputs, VGA, composite, and component. It has many advanced features including scan lines and many other things. The FrameMeister has a frame buffer and it has about 20 milliseconds lag, in other words, about one frame. It takes 5 volts of DC power like the other units and it's a really excellent scaler. But how good is it with the Amiga? Let's find out. If we compare a still shot, the frame meister has a much more natural color and it looks fantastic. Notice the ground and copper backgrounds seem to blend in much nicer. The OSSC is a little harsh and there's also a faint vertical banding I notice as well if you look carefully. It's easy to say that the frame meister is the clear winner here and let's end the video right now, but it's not that simple. The frame meister has a few problems, one of them I would say is almost a deal breaker. First of all, it appears as there's quite a bit of noise on the display. Notice the shimmering in the copper effect. I tried tweaking different options in the frame master menu and I can't seem to get rid of it. The noise is present throughout. Now most of the time you don't notice it, but when you do, it's a little annoying. But the even bigger problem with the frame master is that it struggles to change resolutions. In fact, it will go out of sync for a couple of seconds before displaying the new signal. This can be really distracting especially with Amiga games that switch resolutions, say from low res to interlace mode or to ham mode to display an image. Here are two examples of what I'm talking about. If you can live with the resolution delay sync issue then the Frame Meister is hands down the best scaler around. It has absolutely gorgeous image quality, 
but at $400, it's hard to recommend it alone just for the Amiga. Now, if you have many other retro systems and consoles you want to upscale and want the best possible image, then this is probably the best option for you. The OSSC is a very good upscaler that supports the Amiga nicely. Its image quality isn't as good as the FrameMeister, but it's close, certainly a lot cheaper, and it's in active development with many firmware updates being released for it. It's only going to get better, and it's also worth mentioning that the OSSC has a ton of menu options, and there's quite possibly a better way to get a good image out of it with some tweaking but I'm only going into this with a set and forget mindset. Now, if anyone out there has an OSSC and knows of a better config setting for the Amiga, please let me know. And finally, for $40, the cheap upscaler isn't that bad at all. It has notable frames of lag and a blurrier image, but it gets the job done, especially at 1080p. I think most people who bought one would be very happy with it. Okay, so if I have to pick one of the three, which one would I pick? I would say go with the OSSC at $175. It's not 100% perfect picture quality, but it's pretty good. And with the continuation of the firmware updates that are being made for it, it seems like there's a new firmware that's been released monthly. Uh, I, I can only see this unit improving over time. Now, in this particular review, I want to mention that I didn't talk about the Indivision ECS and Indivision AGA scan doublers for the Amiga. And the reason why I did that was because for those particular units, you have to open up your Amiga's case. It makes it a little different for an average user that wants to get an Amiga running on an LCD display. And also, there's additional configuration that needs to happen with the Indivision line of scan doublers. It's not as easy as just installing it and forgetting about it. There's a lot of tweaks that you have to do in order to get a good image on your LCD or TV. So I felt like that was not really a part of this video. This is really for an external scan doubler to be plugged into your RGB port and to see what type of performance that we can get with those particular devices. Well, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.